Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy DT here. And I am getting ready to react to this interesting video right here that was sent to me by one of my longtime patrons. Thank you so much for your support, babe. And uh, this is basically talking about BTS's solo project promotions and how it appears as if certain guys seem to be getting more promotion and push from the label than others. Uh, I know I've seen that comment in the comment section a lot uh, recently, how uh, people are saying or accusing the label of promoting one guy more than another and so forth, you know? And uh, I will admit that I I have even seen and noticed that uh, there are differences among the guys in terms of uh, uh, the projects that they release, the amount of performances, the amount of TV and media appearances that they do, and the amount of songs that they release, whatever. There are differences in how, you know, not, not each guy is releasing the same amount of material as the others or doing... Uh, the same amount of performances, whatever, than the others. So this video, I guess, is gonna, gonna, gonna go into it a little bit, maybe explain. Uh, so I thought it was an important video for me to watch at the very least, and I'd love to watch it with you guys. So let's find out what this video is gonna talk about, gonna go into in terms of BTS's solo project promotions and how they differ and how there might be some favoritism or not. We'll have to find out. Let's check it out. Now that all of the BTS members have debuted as solo artists, let's analyze why their projects are all so different. It's not only about the different genres and sounds, it's also about the differences in the style of promotions, target audiences, and results. Because this is the reality. A BTS member had a global tour, but another member had one concert at a festival. Another member only had one small venue concert, and another member didn't have any concerts. A BTS member had three physical albums, but Another member only had two. Another member only had one. Another member only had one CD with no photo cards, stickers, and other things the other albums got. But another member didn't get a physical album that charts could count when he first debuted. A BTS member had promotions in the US, the UK, and South Korea. But another member only promoted in the US and Korea. Another member promoted in Korea and Japan. And another member barely did any promotions. A BTS member debuted a number one on the Billboard Hot 100, and his song was the number one song worldwide for weeks on a row. But another member only debuted at number one on the Hot 100. Another member almost entered the top 50, but another only entered the top 100. When you phrase things like this, conflict awaits. Fans complain about unequal support by the label, mm. unequal support by fans, and of course, unequal results. But I think these comparisons are unfair and at this point, malicious. Because if you really think about the intention of each project, you can see the different visions the BTS members had for their solo music careers. If you really want to measure promotion efforts and success, let's talk about how each promotion schedule helped gain the attention of their specific target audiences. And let's also realize that some promotions are actually counterproductive for some members but beneficial for others. You may think I'm crazy, but sometimes a number one on the US can hurt an album's chances to be consumed by certain audiences. Of course, other times it can help the project, but it all comes down to the artist's vision and target audience. So I'll try to explain why I don't think any BTS member, song, or album has been sabotaged by Big Hit, Hive, ARMY, and much less BTS. After okay. analyzing every single piece of promotion, I actually think that every promotion decision has been smart and effective. The member who started the BTS solo era was J-Hope. Like the other members part of the rap line, J-Hope released his first solo project as a mixtape. This is not his official solo debut. Hope World and the other solo mixtapes did not have official promotions, but they were shared on social media by Big Hit. These type of projects were side projects shared for armies as a gift or as extra free music. This is important to highlight so we can understand why some BTS members do certain promotions and not others. Confused armies and J-Hope solo stands can say that 
Jacobs Jack in the Box debut album was sabotaged by Big Hit and Hive because it was released with no physical versions and no performances in Western TV shows or K-pop shows. These three things are expected in a regular BTS promotion schedule, but this is Jacobs' solo career, so look at what he did do and conclude what new audience he wanted to attract. For what I can see, Jacob wants his debut album Jack in the Box to be a long-lasting record listened to not only by armies but also by global fans of hip-hop. People who are actually interested in hip-hop as a genre. Oh, Jay Ho! Jay Ho! ambitions to go worldwide. And Jay Hope is not necessarily going to attract this specific audience by performing on K pop TV shows or American TV shows like Jimmy Fallon and Good Morning America, watched by an older American demographic. Actually, if he did, he would probably lose the specific audience he's trying to attract. For right. what I can see, he is not interested in the general public listening to the Billboard Hot 100 songs. He prefers promoting to an audience interested in hip hop no matter the language. This is a tricky audience to target, but I think every decision he made was perfect. To start, Jacob was the first and only BTS member to launch his album with a listening party. If you pay attention to the artists he invited, you can see that these are mostly indie hip hop artists. Most of them are not mainstream, but they are respected in the South Korean hip hop and alternative native music scenes. This listening party sets the tone for the rest of his solo promotions. Jacob's debut solo performance was as a headliner in Lollapalooza Dope. 2022 in Chicago. His concert had an audience of over a hundred thousand people, including armies, the general public, and of course, curious hip-hop fans. This strategy was extremely successful, because after the event, there were a lot of hip-hop fans listening to the music of a BTS member for the first time, whether in person or online. This event also gave Jacob hope the opportunity to meet and then record a song with the artist who inspired his name, J. Cole. This collaboration and his concert at Lollapalooza gave him an attractive image to this specific audience, the type of audience who prefers simple individual or one-on-one -on -one conversations with no audience and a minimalistic or improvised backstage set. These are the only type of interviews he did and it was intentional, in my opinion. The only exception was his interview at the seasons, but this is also very strategic because this this is not a K-pop show watched by K-pop fans. Unlike K-pop shows, The Seasons has long interviews with no rehearsed answers. Okay, I already see where they're going with this and uh, this is awesome because I feel that as a, some army get way too carried away with and, and way too focused on numbers you know number of views number of albums sold like we we get we get and some of you guys get so consumed by the numbers that you're not appreciating the music for what it was intended for you know it's for you to enjoy as a fan of of the guys of their music and you guys are thinking like you know big hit high executives that's that's their job to think about you know, the number of this, the number of that. I, I realize that it's exciting to be able to say that, you know, this, you know, B BTS or one of, you know, one of the individual guys, you know, broke some kind of record. You know, we love numbers, right? But uh, I would hope that you guys focus on what the music was intended for, and that's to be enjoyed by fans. By idols doing Egyo and an Andy Ferry and performing a choreography with playback. For this same reason, the interviewees, the performances, and the audience watching the show are different. Thanks to this, J Hope has the freedom to do a more personal performance he wouldn't be able to do on a K pop TV show. The last thing to note about J Hope's solo debut is the pace of promotions. He didn't do every interview and performance the first two weeks of the album release. This could put his Billboard and Korean charts positions in risk, but that's okay because that was not his goal. He actually performed in Lollapalooza two weeks after his album release, and he continued with promotions with months in between each promo. Almost five months after the release of the album, he performed at the 2022 MAMA, which let him do a unique stage with no choreography. Then, six months after his debut, j mm -hmm. performs at Times Square New Year's Eve. Seven months after his debut, he releases and promotes his J-Hope in the box 
Fox documentary on Disney Plus and has an interview on a popular YouTube channel. Nine months after the release of his album, he performs and has an interview on the seasons. As you can see, the promotions are focusing on longevity more than on day one success, so J Hope's records reflect that. Here comes the biggest complaint. When J Hope released Jack in the Box, the physical album did not come with a physical CD. They came with most small things you would get in a regular BTS physical album and a QR code to listen to the songs on the Weaver's Albums app. This code replaced the CD, and for that, it did not count on Western charts like Billboard. Since this was the first time BTS did this and the Weaver's Albums app is a new app by Hype, people accused Hype of affecting J-Hope's debut numbers, of purposefully sabotaging him just to promote their streaming app. But again, look at J-Hope's overall promotions. Why would they Every do that? Every interview or performance was far apart. This doesn't mean that the promotions are bad. Actually, these type of promotions are very common with Western artists because they are less exhausting for both the artist and the audience, and it can improve longevity. It's true that he released his debut album almost exclusively on digital platforms, but six months later, he released a well-produced vinyl record, and now, more than a year after the debut week, he released physical albums that count toward the Billboard charts. These are the type of promotions you have when you want your album to be discovered and remembered by fans time and time again over the years, not just the first two weeks. This helps with longevity and helps his desired audience, hip hop listeners, have multiple chances of discovering his music. The unique performances and simple interviews that will be discovered will not disappoint this audience, because these are the type of performances and interviews they already enjoy. So the results successfully match the promotions. Love this Next song. We have Jin's solo debut single, The Astronaut which he released as a See You Later song before going to the military. The biggest complaint I've seen about Jin's debut is from solo stands saying that this is not a proper debut because most members had album debuts, but Jin only had a single. The assumption is not that Jin decided to release a single, but that Hyde and even BTS are at fault because Jin said that he wanted to go to the military earlier during the summer, right after the end of the proof promotions in June. Therefore, according to some people, Jin was forced by the other BTS members and their label to wait until October for their unexpected Busan concert, so he had no choice other than to go to the military on the winter and quickly release the astronaut after being busy with everything. This gave him only days to promote his song, so there were no interviews in America and no music shows in Korea. He only performed as a guest artist in Coldplay's concert in Argentina. However, you don't need to be a genius to realize that the astronaut was not made for the general public's consumption. Like Jin said multiple times, he wanted to make one song for armies before yeah. going to the military. He talked to Chris Martin from Coldplay about the kind of message he wanted to transmit, and Chris Martin produced the song specifically for Jin. This was not meant to be an official debut with a non-army audience in mind. This doesn't mean that it was an abandoned project. The Astronaut is Jin's official debut single, and had two physical album versions, a music video, a lyric video, a live stadium performance, official merchandise, and yeah, even bro. a show of four episodes with a blog What style. the hell do you he want from this guy? Five interviews, one by himself, one with Shaga, and three in relaxed, non-serious I settings, watched every single one of those. channels, and one for TV. All of these interviews and shows help him relax and comfortably talk in his native language about his life and one. future. So once again, this BTS solo project that was one. successfully recognized by its desired audience. In this case, ARMY. We would have to wait for Jin's solo debut album after his military service to know what kind of music style and new audience he wants to pursue. Damn. The next BTS member to officially debut was RM with his album Indigo. What I've seen people saying is that ARMYs did not support RM's debut like we supported the other solo debuts. But once again, pay attention to the type of audience who is actually listening and RM is promoting to. As part of Indigo's promotions, RM accepted only four interviews, all of them in the format of a long conversation. These were for the Sex Sense show, hosted by an American interviewer he trusts, the P6 show, hosted by comedians who interview mostly hip-hop artists and who Namjoon is a fan of, Sutrita, hosted by his BTS bandmate Suga, and KBS News, a pretty serious South Korean news show. 
Namjoon chose these four shows wisely, and he may share Army's new why he really he wanted talked to, to Pharrell too. only. That was this is awesome. the only YouTube promotion for this, my whole album. Why? I've watched every show. When it comes to interview, what popped in my mind first was you. I told the label that I, if I, if I have to interview with somebody, it's, it's got to be Zach number one. Brother, thank you. Your kindness and your trust means the world to me. So why these shows? If you watch these interviews, you can quickly realize he had his album and the album's production process as the main topics of conversation. Most interviewers don't ask RM meaningful questions, and if they do ask important questions about the music, they don't care or they don't understand the answer. Most interviews have superficial conversations. Do you guys like to dance at your shows? Do you do a lot of dancing? Oh, of course. You guys are all together, but you didn't bring your girlfriends. When someone knows and recognizes you do, you, do you have to run away? Do you ever get tired of each other? Do you guys ever just... So Namjoon chose people he knew would understand wow. and care about his process of creating music. That was his priority. Indigo is not the general public's favorite type of album, and Namjoon knew that. So if there's a new type of audience he would attract after his official solo debut, it's the type of audience who likes indie, underground music. The type of audience who enjoys discovering unknown artists and who appreciates less mainstream genres like neo soul, boom bap, urban, city pop, and folk. This is why... So... I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but I think last year... Um, when they, when uh, I think when J Hope and I think right around this time, whenever this was, I, I actually said that what Army needs to realize and understand is that these solo projects, they're completely separate from BTS's work. So if you're if you're comparing, if you're trying to compare any of these guys' solo projects with the success and the the numbers that BTS as a group puts out usually. It's not going to be the same. Like if BTS normally puts out a song and it gets 100 million views uh, in the first 24 hours or whatever, and you expect the guy's solo projects to have those type of numbers as well, it's not going to happen. Or it's, it's very unlikely that it's going to happen. These are more of, of uh, passion projects for the guys. You know, it's, their, it's what they want to do. You know, it's not made for everyone. You know, they're going very, very niche and um, they're doing it for the art and to express themselves in a different way. Maybe explore some different uh, creative uh, sounds and stuff like that. So it's not meant to do the type of numbers that BTS as a group does. And ARMY needs to understand that and expect that. I said that last summer, but like I said before... I think uh, a lot of ARMY, certainly not all of them, gets way too caught up in numbers and how the, how the album or song performs and charting and positions. I think uh, some of you guys get way too caught up in that and you guys kind of lose perspective. Um, once again, certainly not all of you, not the majority of you, but some of you get a little carried away with that. And... Um, so, yeah, I was a little bit frustrated to see some people in the comment section really causing a lot of noise and complaining that and causing controversies and uh, conspiracy theories. And they were totally getting away from what I think BTS actually intended for these solo projects to be. And so uh, I'm glad that this person is kind of uh, get, going into that a little bit and uh, reminding us what what really might have been going on. The only performance he did for American media was for NPR's Tiny Desk concert series. The setting is more personal than most mainstream shows, and a lot of enthusiastic music fans want to discover non-mainstream artists as well as watch popular artists relax in this type of unplugged acoustic setting. So a confident yet vulnerable performer and great lyricist like RM shines the most in these type of settings. Right. This is why instead of having a worldwide tour, he chose to give one concert to an audience of only 200 people. This concert has some of the artists who featured in his album. The list of featured artists is also something not everyone can fully appreciate. Most of the songs part of Indigo have featured artists RM deeply admire 
Myers. For right. his Neo Soul song, the feature artist Erica is Badu. the queen of Neo Soul, Erika Badu. That was for his awesome. funk song, the feature artist is and Anderson so. Pack, known for his funky style. Aaron also included artists he admires, but Aaron as worldwide famous such as Kim Sa Woo and Cole. This album also has a lot of references to painters and their art pieces such as Jung and Still Life. Aaron's debut album Indigo is for the music fans who care about meaning and art. This is why he chose to have only one because physical that's him. version of his album instead of the normal two. This, alongside the fact that the physical versions took weeks to be delivered, affected his album sales numbers. But caring too much about that is crazy and shows that you're not paying attention to all the meaning of this project. RM purposefully left all the flashy photo cards, stickers, and photo shoots aside. Instead, he made his physical album some type of art piece. The pages are full of poems, graphic artwork, and photographs taken by RM. He also released a vinyl record months after the album debut, That's which, dope. just like the physical album, includes RM's artwork pieces. His third and last performance was at Tia Beacon, a museum in New York with no audience. So, of course, most people won't get it, but the ones who can perceive and appreciate RM's passion in this album are the correct people listening and becoming fans. And by all the records RM was able to achieve with such an experimental album, I can say that his minimal minimalistic yet meaningful promotions have been detected by the right people, armies and music fans who care about stuff like this. Once again, this BTS solo project was successfully recognized by its desired audience. The next BTS member to officially debut was Jimin with his album Face. Face is a pop album, and its promotions were a little closer to a regular BTS promotion schedule. Jimin released teasers for the pre-release single Set Me Free Part 2 and the main single Like Crazy, which he released alongside the full album. This schedule is similar to J-Hope's schedule, which also included teasers and a pre-release single before the main single. On the other hand, RM released teasers and music videos for the main single and a follow-up single, as well as a surprise music video for a B-side which became an OST. It's important to know these differences, because although some promotions like Jimin and J-Hope's are similar in some aspects, that doesn't mean that they are targeting the same audiences. Oh, yeah. Like I said, J-Hope's album was targeted at a global hip-hop audience, but Jimin's album was targeted at a global pop audience. Yep. And for that, promotions in a show like Jimmy Fallon work better. Jimmy so Fallon Jimmy was a main guest at the Tonight Show starting and Jimmy Fallon where he had an interview and performed his main single. We also need to highlight that Jimmy's interview was mostly in English, so he had to practice most of his answers since he doesn't dominate the language. But this decision of taking the challenge of speaking English made sense since Jimmy's main single being promoted in America was the English version of Like Crazy, yeah. not the original Korean version. This is also why he performed the English version at the Jimmy Fallon show. Other BTS member will later also attend the Jimmy Fallon show, but his choices will be the complete opposite of Jimin's because his target audience is different. Right. The only other promotion Jimin did for America was a day in the life style of interview for both. Then he started the Korean TV promotions. Like I mentioned, K-pop shows have more superficial interviews and flashy performances, but Jimin's pop songs and difficult choreographies shine the most in these type of settings. J-Hope's Jack in the Box performances don't have choreographies, so they work best in a hip-hop show than in a k-pop show. To still demonstrate a more vulnerable and casual side, Jimin had a lengthy interview at SBS Radio as well as an interview and performance I watched all of them. version of Like Crazy in the show Limujin Service. These interviews were not as complicated as RM's interviews, but they were still introspective and personal enough to explain the meaning of his pop album face in an accessible way to global audiences. As expected, Jimin also went to Suga's show Suchita. Like Jen Dope. and RM, Jimmy made a video for a popular YouTube channel. And like Jen, Jimmy released two physical versions of his album. Finally, Jimmy was the first member to release remixes of his main single and to have video calls with fans. However, many complained that all of these promotions ended too fast because only two weeks after, Shika started promoting his debut album. While I do agree that Face felt like a very short era, I don't really see what else he could have done. 
actually Jimmy did more promotions than any other member up until this point. It just all went really fast because Suga had a tour planned, so he had no choice other than releasing his album then. Suga also couldn't have his tour later because his military enlistment date right. was approaching fast, so it was literally then or never. Still though, Suga's album and type of promotions are very different to Jimmy's album and promotions, and if there's any new audiences listening to them for the first time, they won't be the same audiences. I also think it's even crazier to put Jimin and Suga against each other and compare their promotions when this opportunity gave us a lot of really cool promotion crossovers. I still understand however that the face era was a little frustrating. And because Jimin actually went on stage with Suga. Uh, during his concert, you know? Since it had they some actually worked together. in America, it had success in America, and the American media did not like that. I have a whole video about this problem, but in a few words, Jimin's quote-unquote mistake was not paying for radio and playlisting in streaming platforms, which is illegal and BTS would never. So the sabotage by American media was hard. But again, this has nothing to do with ARMY's efforts, HYPE's efforts, and much less Jimmy's efforts. Yeah. Jimmy's schedule was precise, effective, and more than enough. Other complaints appeared when Jungkook had his solo debut, because it looked like he was also promoting for a global pop audience, but he had a wider variety of global promotions. However, I actually believe Jimin and Jungkook's target pop audiences were completely different. I think I'll talk so. about Jungkook's debut later, but Jimin's pop style and his new audience that likes songs like Like Crazy may crossover with the audiences that like these current popular songs by Dua Lipa and Troy Savan. I know the sound of these songs are not that similar, but I'm just trying to paint a picture. These type of pop songs have a stronger feminine and glamorous element, and they have this disco house synth style that it's kind of trendy these days. Which I love. To put it in BTS terms, both Boy With Love featuring Halsey and Butter featuring Megan Thee Stallion are pop songs, but the general public that likes Boy With Love featuring Halsey is not always the same general public that likes Butter featuring Megan Thee Stallion. Right. Jimmy's solo debut is a little closer to Boy Boy with love, while Jungkook's solo debut is a little closer to Butter, so their promotions are going to be different. Because Jimmy's pop style is friendlier to the general public than the other solo debuts up until this point, like Crazy, 73 Part 2, and the album Face broke multiple records in mainstream charts and platforms like Billboard, Spotify, and Korean charts. The achievements of other members like J-Hope and RM are different, because the promotions were different, because the target audiences were different. So once again, this BTS solo project was successfully recognized by its desired audience. Mm -hmm. The next BTS member to officially debut was Suga under his alternative alias Augusty yeah. with his album D Day. That was Shuga's sick, bro. The were very unique, and it took me days to figure out the promotion strategy and if there was even one. Because although D Day is a hip hop album, the style of promotions were closer to promotions being done by experienced South Korean artists targeting a non-K-pop Korean demographic. To start, Suga created and became the host of his own show, Suchita, in which he interviews other South Korean artists while having some drinks. The editing style is dynamic and the conversations are very casual, so the show feels like a combination of the- And in case many of you guys don't know, I have reacted to every one of, Such of Suchita's uh interviews with bts you can check them out on patreon the link is down below that's where they're at a high production of a talk show with the casualness of a podcast these shows where the artist is the interviewer are actually very common among south korean artists who have been in the industry for a while this is what i mean by the typical korean promotion by experienced artists this is an actual promotion strategy rivers magazine has an article about it so you may think that Suga is going to adhere to this style of promotions. Well, yes, but not exactly. Suga seemed comfortable continuing this Korean style of promotions, but he's going to erect it at a global audience. So even if his promotions don't always necessarily align with a global Yeah, make, make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I have a lot of thoughts, I have a lot of feelings, and we're going to talk about it hip-hop audience or an indie audience or a pop audience, it will still bring the attention from different types of global audiences while at the same time giving itself a constant cleanup. So I think Suga's promotion strategy was 
If you're open-minded and you like me and my music, good for you. And if you don't, I don't care. I'm serious. You just need to look at everything he's done. First, that sounds exactly like what, single, what Sugar two, would which say. Which is a collaboration with IU, a beloved singer in South Korea who also has her own show. As part of the People Part 2 promotions, Suga hosted his own radio show and was a guest star at IU's show a couple of days after the song release. Both the song and music video are very calm and I can sense the Korean concept of Han, which is common in South Korean music and BTS songs like Spring Day. The music video even has an ending scene in which Suga explains the sentiment of the song. So although it's hard for this song to be globally successful with the general public because it's not flashy, it doesn't have a choreography, and the explanation scene makes the video too long for mainstream audiences, its message, style, and feature artists work with an older Korean demographic who doesn't necessarily listen to K-pop. While the promotion for People Part 2 is friendlier to this Korean audience, the main single Hegem is friendlier to a global audience. The high-budget music video with a strong storyline immediately got the attention of global hip-hop, K-pop, and even pop audiences. Hegem so is sick. a hip-hop song with aggressive ah, I love that video. raps, which is what most people expect from an Augustine music video. Augustine. So now Sheila has the attention of a South Korean audience and a global audience, but the third single, Love that guy. Gala, will focus on his biggest audience, ARMY. This song and music video are extremely personal to Suga and they explain a traumatic event for him. The song's lyrics and theme are painful and explicit, so the music video has an age restriction. While it doesn't feel right for many armies to use this single as part of a promotion schedule with a strategy and a target audience in mind, I think this trilogy of videos can once again get the attention from people who are actually interested in the story Suga is trying to tell. Right. To truly get his music, you need to care enough to go out of your way to find his story, motives, and a style of storytelling. This is why, just like J-Hope, Suga decided to also have his own documentary on Disney+. Oh. He's basically giving every audience the opportunity to understand him and his music. If you guys want to watch that, my reaction to that right there, his documentary, it's on Patreon as well. Go check it out. Music, but if they don't, he won't go out of his way to convince anybody. Just look at his promo activities. The documentary titled Sugar Road to D-Day follows Sugar great. on a trip around the world in the search of inspiration for his debut album and it includes exclusive performances with a live band. Soon after, Suga started his sold-out tour around the US and Still Asia. can't believe he did like that. the rest of his album promotions, this tour felt very raw, personal, no, and dope. real. He replaced the neat choreographies with performances yeah. with a guitar and a piano. So Freaking brilliant! Suga being a guest at The Tonight Show and even playing a game with Jimmy Fallon may seem like attempts to go mainstream, Suga decided to continue his casual style of promotions and refused to speak English or dance a choreography for mainstream audience. He still put himself out there and accepted many interviews for different radios in America. But by choosing to speak his native Korean and have a translator on his international interviews, Suga prioritized the meaning of his album and his true personality. So only the ones who are not bothered by reading subtitles will be the right new audience listening to his music. This BTS solo project was successfully recognized by its desired audience. The next BTS member to officially debut was Jungkook with his single 7. Now, up until this point, all of the sounds and styles of the solo works have been pretty predictable. J-Hope has already released hip-hop music. Jin has already released pop rock music. RM has already released these experimental styles of music. Jimin has already released pop music. And Suga's album is the third part of a project going on for years. But Jungkook's 7 came as a surprise to some armies because it's not something many would expect from BTS. To start, Seven is a pop song of the UK garage genre, and it has two main versions. A clean version about wanting to spend every moment of every day with one's lover, and an explicit version which expresses a more sexual desire. What? Combine this with Jungkook's commercials really? as a new ambassador for Calvin Klein and Seven's promotional campaign, and you can see a clear new image of Jungkook as an 
artist. Both versions of the song feature the American rapper Lado and the music video features the South Korean actress Han Soo Hee as Jungkook's girlfriend. The promotions were focused on three countries, the US, the UK, and South Korea. In the US, Jungkook had an interview and performed Seven on the day of its release in New York as part of Good Morning America's summer concert series. He then had interviews with Spotify and radio shows like Odyssey Music, The Elvis Duran Show, Sirius XM, C100 New York, and iHeartRadio. In the UK, Jungkook had an interview and performed on BBC's The One Show and on BBC Radio One's Live Lunch. Oh, in South good. Korea, Jungkook only performed in the K-pop music show in Kigayu, but that one performance was enough to make Jungkook the most awarded K-pop soloist this year across different K-pop shows. Dope. As well, Jungkook released three EPs of remixes, the weekday version, the weekend version, and the Alesso remix. The physical CDs were produced by Hype America, and they did not have the regular style of a BTS single album like Jeans the Astronaut, for example. Instead, this CD was a simple CD more common in the US. This is nothing new. BTS has already released simple CDs, vinyls, and cassettes like this for their US singles. This style of promotions in the US helped Jungkook become the second BTS member to get a number one song on the Hot 100 as a solo artist. In a few words, Jungkook's promotion schedule included a lot of the activities artists do to make their song go mainstream. However, because the song is explicit, it caters a western mainstream audience and it doesn't have a profound message of the other BTS solo projects, some people think it's too westernized and yeah. that it doesn't feel like a BTS song. I heard a lot, about, I I heard a lot of that in the comments. <laughs> targeted at western audiences and the general audience. A lot of audience. people said that. Why is this surprising or even disappointing to some fans? I think this is happening because sometimes armies don't truly accept BTS as their pop culture image. They see them through their wholesome, family-friendly, philosophical image only. And this can sound very nice, but I think this is the reason why Seven can't come as a shock to them. And to be honest, I'm a little tired of this, because it's like some armies want BTS to be the artist they want them to be. Not Damn. the multidimensional artists BTS truly are. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Nice ass. Thank you. it's always the same story. BTS shows versatility, people say, this is not what I expected from them. BTS released DNA, it sounds too Western. BTS released Boy With Love, it sounds too Western and it lacks meaning. BTS released Dynamite, it sounds too Whining. Western, it lacks meaning and it's in English. So the cape of fantasy is broken. BTS released Butter, it sounds too Western, it lacks meaning, it's in English, and they only care about Western success. BTS released Permission to Dance, it sounds too Western, it lacks meaning, it's in English, they only care about Western success, and it was not written by the BTS members. And now Jungkook releases Seven, but it sounds too Western, it lacks meaning, it's in English, they only care about Western success, it was not written by a BTS member, and it's too explicit. But like I said a million times already, BTS makes music that attracts completely completely different audiences, and this is not new at all. Some people say that Jimin's song was also mainstream pop, but at least two BTS members were songwriters and it has meaningful lyrics. But it looks like these fans are ignoring the past years of BTS's career. Wasted on Me, Dynamite, Savage Love, Butter, Permission to Dance, and Bad Decisions were targeted at the Western general public. While still releasing the regular hip-hop, pop, and R&B songs, BTS promoted one song with the purpose of being the mainstream song that can actually get recognized in western media like billboard and the grammys once again they do this all the time. While continuing their meaningful Korean discography, BTS has released an English project for Western audiences and a Japanese project for Japanese audiences. So I don't know why this is suddenly a surprise. And Jungkook's global promotion worked. Seven has been the number one song worldwide for weeks, and I won't be surprised if it's nominated for American award shows. And this makes a lot of sense. Think about BTS's old competition, mainstream hip-hop based duets with explicit lyrics. While it's easy to judge these songs for being too explicit or meaningless, the truth is that this is what the general public listens to, and a song doesn't have to be clean or have multiple layers of meaning to be a good song. Actually, there was one time when an interviewer had the same criticism for one of the songs competing with Dynamite back in 2020, but BTS disagreed with the interviewer and defended the song. <laughs> <laughs> so just because a song is explicit doesn't mean that it's bad or dirty. 
당신을 엿먹이는 것과 당신을 사랑하는 것은 같은 것이 아닙니다 서양 아티스트로 더티 버전을 만든 이유는 무엇입니까? 그게 왜 더티 버전이야? 그게 왜 더티 버전이야? I remember this 이유를 설명을 해봐 이유를 설명을 해봐 엑스플리스 버전인데 그냥 솔직한 거잖아 뭐 그렇게 느껴졌다면 뭐 어쩔 수 없지만 어쩔 수 없지 나이가 몇이냐 내가 I remember this 저도 이제 나이가 27인데 나이 먹으니까 이렇게 노출이 있는 촬영을 또 하게 되네요 그런 거 싫어하는 분들도 계시겠지만 Seven is actually the perfect song for today's pop It has a female rapper as a feature artist and Jungkook's pop voice makes the song fresh, modern, and the perfect adaptation of the typical modern mainstream song. Despite some people's beliefs, I see the care of a regular BTS project in this song too. It's well produced, polished, and not a typical lazy song done exclusively to fool people into streaming it. Whether Jungkook decides to make a full album in English targeted at a Western audience like Butter, a self-produced Korean album like Map of the Soul 7, or a mix of both by Jimin's face, I'll support because they are experimenting with their solo careers and finding their personal right. sound and target Oh my god, so people. once again, this solo project was successfully I feel a rant coming on. its desired audience. <laughs> The last BTS member to debut as a solo artist is V with his album Layover. These promotions have started not long ago, but we can already see what kind of audience Taehyung is promoting to. However, complaints by solo stands were out before the album was out. They claim that the label is purposefully not doing any promotions and that Taehyung is doing everything himself by sharing his projects on social media. This idea that Hive is constantly trying to sabotage the artist that brings them the most money is pretty silly, but it's funny how it's doesn't make any sense. Fans who complain about favoritism. Just like every BTS solo Whining. project, we need to understand and accept that their music is different. Layover is very different to all of the BTS solo projects, so the promotions are going to be very different as well. Just like most of V's music as part of BTS, Layover is R&B with elements of soul and pop. Therefore, the performances and interviews will fit the promotions for an R&B project. Right. So don't focus on every mainstream promotion didn't do. Focus on how he is choosing alternative mediums for promotions. To start, Taeyong released five different music videos, one for each five. song of the album. This five. is already huge. The maximum number of music videos a BTS member has released for one album is three. A pre-release, a main release, and a follow-up. But Taeyong has two pre-releases, a main release, and two follow-ups. Why do I have this to be right all the time? This is that I wanted BTS to try for a while. Think about these popular albums. Their promotions mm. included music videos for multiple of the album's songs. This prolongs the artist's promotion schedule and it helps each song of the album become popular, not yeah. just one song or two. So if we concentrate on this R&B project's promotion strategy, let's think about every door Taeyeon opened for himself by releasing these many music videos. His debut performance was not at a Western show or a K-pop show or a festival. It was on a new Korean music I said show it. that slows down chart competition by announcing an artist of the month, not a song of the week, which usually exhausts the artists and the fandoms. This show is also more personal than a festival or a western TV show. So for this kind of calm album, this debut stage feels right. On K-pop shows, artists normally perform one or two songs, three being the maximum number of performances. But this specific K-pop show let Taeyoon perform four of his songs at once. Why am I mentioning this? Because the only reason Taeyoon was able to perform his entire album on K-pop TV shows was because he released music videos for the entire album. For Inkigayo, he performed the main single Slow Dancing and Rainy Days. For Mnet, he performed Slow Dancing and Love Me Again. For Music Band, he performed Slow Dancing and For Us. And for N Pop, he performed Slow Dancing, Love Me Again, Rainy Days and Blue. That it's was dope. genius. Taeyong was, was dope. able to promote his entire R&B album on K-pop TV shows. This is the first time an artist has done this dope. successfully. But it doesn't end here. Taeyong did not only choose this new K-pop TV show with less than 60,000 subscribers as an alternative medium. He also was one of the first artists to perform on the new series mm. Tiny Desk mm. Korea. Mm. This is mm. a new show part of NPR's Tiny Desk that was amazing, series, which features only South Korean artists. I hope you guys watched my reaction to that. Was released 
released on both Tiny Desk Korea and NPR's Tiny Desk Concert. So he is, in a way, promoting his Korean R&B album to a global audience. Finally, Taeyo became the first member to promote in Japan. This is also very smart because if there's any country with a big market who will listen to an R&B Korean album is Japan, the second biggest music market in the world. These interviews and performances help Taeyeon show his warm and soulful personality to an audience that is more likely to consume this kind of project. His personality is also reflected on the style of photo shoots and the three physical albums he wanted to release. Yeah. These music videos, teasers, interviews, and media articles are planned, organized, and shared not only by V, but also by HYBE and BTS on all of their social media platforms. If you expect Taeyeon to have the numbers of pop releases or the type of promotions of the hip-hop releases, you are crazy because he never intended to promote to those audiences. For an R&B album, Layover is huge. And this BTS solo project is successfully being recognized by its desired audience. <laughs> Let's not forget that although BTS are on their era of solo music, they are still releasing music as a group. After the solo promotions started with J-Hope, BTS promoted their song Run BTS. They released The Planet, an OST song for an animated film, and they released Take Two as part of their 10th anniversary celebration. Love Just that. like every other solo project and group project, these songs have different sounds, so they have different audiences, so they have different promotions. Run BTS is a song that is friendly to K-pop audiences. It's fast-paced, it has a choreography, and it shows a ton of energy. So they released a dance practice, performed it at their Busan concert, and released a lot of TikTok videos with K-pop artists. The Planet is a song for an animated series about a young idol group with superpowers. So the genre is pop and the style is simple but energetic. The music video and promotions are all related to the show and they have a younger audience in mind. Take Two is a classical letter song for armies. It was written and produced by BTS that. members and it has the classical BTS sound when yep, it comes to awesome. the slow pop R&B ballad songs. Like I mentioned before about V's project, this style of songs actually work pretty well on Japanese audiences. So it debuted at number 6 on the Billboard Japan Hot 100, with no music videos, remixes or anything. But it's pretty clear that the main audience for this song is ARMY. So it charted well on pretty much every global chart. Mm -hmm. Basically, every one of these songs had the right promotions for each of their audiences. We need to see the solo projects and their promotions like this too. Maybe for some, this analysis of each solo promotion was unnecessary and obvious. But I had to nope. do it because I received so many messages by armies who don't consider themselves so do I. being confused about why some members had quote unquote more opportunities than others. Some were genuinely confused by Jungkook's explicit lyrics, RM's minimalistic promotions, <laughs> and J-Hope's lack of physical albums. So I hope I helped calm the confusion at you least did. a little. You did. That was Always awesome. Need to accept that BTS are real multidimensional artists. Thank there you. are seven artists with different visions, styles, and journeys in their music. Of course, their promotion schedules are going to be different. Sure, armies are the main audience listening to their solo projects, but the BTS members are going to perform and accept interviews on the shows that they feel the most comfortable showcasing their music. Don't expect the global BTS style of promotions for every solo project and cry when that doesn't happen. Cry! The sound and their personalities individually. Don't cry! The solo projects align with the solo songs they had on BTS albums. So accept the BTS members as the multidimensional artists they are. Trust them and their decisions, especially in this solo era. Okay. If you believe in us, trust us. Thank you, Ari. Okay, here we go. Here we go. First of all, that was an incredible video. Bora City Magazine, I mean, did an incredible job breaking that down, explaining. Uh, very thorough. I'm glad she did it. It was definitely necessary. It was necessary because, damn. I get a lot of those messages too. I see them in the comments. You've seen them in the comments. The whining. But uh, 
I'm not going to say anything that she hasn't already said. She pretty much kind of summed it up there at the end. But uh, I'm just going to leave it like this. BTS are all different. They all have different amounts of appeal. They have different skill sets, you know. Uh, but that's why as a group, when they're together, they have such mass appeal. Because the sum of their parts creates something extraordinary, beautiful, magnificent. Uh, individually, that's what this was all about. That's what this solo era was all about. They wanted to show you the individual side of them. They wanted to express themselves, their personalities, their style, their look, their sound. That's what they wanted to put out to the world. And whoever vibed with it, vibed with it. And not everybody is going to vibe with them individually with what they like. You know, a lot of ARMY like them as a group of what they represent as the sum of their parts. But that's what the solo era was about. They wanted to show you, hey, this is more of, this is more of me and what I'm about. This is my flavor. This is my style. This is my color. And if you're into it, I want, I want, I want, to, I want to show you that. I want to show you that side. But uh, it was really about the art. I don't think BTS cares as much as a lot of you guys think about awards, charting, views, numbers, sales. That's the executive's job at HYBE. HYBE is a multi-billion dollar company. They have dudes that think about that 24 seven and are focused on that, the numbers, all that stuff. BTS are the artists. They do it for the art. They do it for the creativity. They do it for the love of their music, their passion. That's what they're in it for. And I'll be honest. I think when they do care about some of that other stuff, they're doing it for the company that they work for, not necessarily them. Uh, all BTS really wants is respect. That's what BTS wants more than anything. Uh, they want respect from the music industry. They want respect worldwide from from from. Uh, from every from every country, they want that respect. And if getting a Grammy gets them respect, okay, they're going to want a Grammy to gain that respect. But that's all they really want. And lastly, I'll say, yeah, uh, just like BTS, each one of these guys are very, very different. Have You know, everybody, everybody's different. Uh, every army is different. I am different than you. And uh, it's like people get mad when you're not the exact amount of fan as they are. Like they get their feelings hurt when you don't go as nuts as they do about every little detail. Uh, that's just what it is. Every fan is different. Everybody has their own opinion. Every, everybody has their certain level of enthusiasm and intensity. But we're still all fans of BTS. That's what we have in common. But to start, you know, jabbing at people and, and, and getting in fights in the comments section, trying to have these loyalty tests or purity tests is ridiculous. So uh, I'm glad she did this video. And I'm glad, you know, if this, some of you guys are going to get mad and upset about this video and what I have to say about it, that's fine. And I've said it many times. I'm not for everybody. My particular, the, the type of fan of BTS that I am is going to appeal to some people. And it's going to turn off others. That's just the way it is. Just like BTS, some of them individually, whatever they like to do, whatever their musical sound is, might turn off some army. That's just not their thing. But who cares? Who cares? You know what I'm saying? Appreciate for them for the uh, for the art that they put out because at the end of the day they are artists. I'm glad they have to they they kind of remind us every now and again that they are artists. They do it for the for the for the love and the passion of their music. All right. So let's not get too carried away and caught up in numbers and comparisons because that's not what they do it for. Have you ever seen any of the guys? Talk, talk bad about the other. Have you ever seen any hint of jealousy, bitterness, you know, talking down to another member of the group? You have never seen any of the guys talk bad 
about the other guys, ever. You've, you've never seen them get jealous. You've never seen them complain about not getting enough promotion as the other guy. They've never complained about how come, how come he gets an album, a, a physical album, and I don't. Uh, have you ever seen them complain? So like RM said, believe in them and trust them. Trust that they know what they're doing and they have nothing to prove to anyone. They have already shown that they have done it all. They've done every style of music. They've done every. They've done everything you could possibly imagine from an artistic standpoint, and they have nothing to prove. Now it's all about what 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 new exciting creative direction can they take to continue to develop themselves as artists and as people. That's really what they're doing it for. And if they if they try things that you don't like, so be it but they're on their own personal journey as artists and we need to respect that. Anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching y'all. I appreciate you guys for listening to me. Just another BTS fan with a mouth who talks and says things. And sometimes people listen and agree and sometimes not, but we're all family. Anyway, have a good one y'all. Your boy DT is out.